，哎呀，啾啾，得落个。Video. In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel The Game Terrorists. I'm a huge fan of their work and I hope that you will like this video as well. Um, this video came out in the year 2015. Sorry. And I think it's around six years ago. Let's start. Not many game franchises can last a decade, let alone multiple generations. Which is why with 25 games across 12 consoles, The Legend of Zelda is a pillar in the gaming community. But with so many games, some are obviously going to be better than others. True. So today we pick two that are constantly compared. Zelda 2 and The Wand of Gamelon. <laughs> of course not. Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past. One that distilled the 2D Zelda formula to perfection. The other that launched it to a whole new dimension. So which of the two is the true high ruler of the franchise? Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, welcome to Deadlock. Welcome. To deadlock. Oh my gosh, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Oh gosh. Hey, listen. You'll be dead faster than Link's uncle. <laughs> oh! If we're gonna decide what the better Zelda game is, we first have to define what a Zelda game is. Starting a debate with a definition? Talk about cliched. According to the Oxford Dictionary, Zelda, noun, is a princess from the famous Nintendo franchise. Nate wants to battle? More like Nate <laughs> wants to prematurely jump to conclusions. Oh snap! Ah, I'm talking about the spirit. Oh, fire early! Ooh, <laughs> of a Zelda game. And to identify that, we need to go back to the first game in the franchise. The whole inspiration for Zelda came to Shigeru Miyamoto in the first place from his memories of being a young boy and being able to spend his days exploring things like forests and lakes and caves and villages. As if we haven't heard this story in a hundred other YouTube retrospective videos. To him, the Zelda franchise was meant to be a series of little mini gardens to play in and explore at your own pace. It was a mysterious playground filled to the brim with things to do and treasures to find. The original Zelda didn't tell you about the right way to go because it isn't just one answer. The series was, at its core, about the spirit of adventure into the unknown. Unknown is right. When was the last time someone beat that game without a trusty old FAQ at their side? It's dangerous to go alone, take this. Okay, but what else, old man? How about a <laughs> the internet lost it Tam Tam or something? And aren't you supposed to be talking about A Link to the Past? Well, that's just it. You know Perfect Cell from DBZ? This is Perfect Zelda. Link to the Past is its final form. It has plenty of exploration and open-ended adventure like Miyamoto first envisioned, but with a little more direction so you're not begging the old man in the cave for an outdated GPS system. Add to that a world double the size of the original with more refined puzzles, more varied combat, and the first appearance of the best video game item ever, and you have undoubtedly the better Zelda game. Hmm. Ocarina of Time does everything you just said and more, and it does it far better on the Ooh. Nintendo 64. The game was one of the best jumps for any franchise from 2D to 3D. It's probably the most innovative in the series with the Z-targeting system, basically writing the book on how to manage 3D combat. Inbot, 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 inbot. Inbot. <laughs> inbot for the win. <laughs> and is still an industry standard today. The story was epic, the dungeons were challenging and plentiful, the bosses were incredible, the overworld was huge, and it felt great to just hop on your horse and ride. The worlds were brilliantly connected. I mean, come on, how is this even a question? <laughs> Look, no one's disputing the fact that Ocarina of Time took a bunch of things that Link to the Past did and made them bigger and flashier, but let's take this point by point. That huge overworld of yours was just a giant field of empty 
empty space that you had to spam roll to get across. Yeah, until you got Epona, another series first, I might add. Then you could ride your trusty steed, shoot arrows on horseback, again, giving you that sense of adventure you were lecturing us about at the beginning. Sure, for that one area of the game where all I could do was shoot the occasional Poe. It wasn't until Twilight Princess that Epona added a new depth to the game. But it started in Ocarina. And speaking of things that started in Ocarina Z-Targeting, I think most of us have seen uh, Ego Raptor's incredible sequelitis video, so I'm not gonna harp on it here, but let's compare Link to the Past and Ocarina for a second. Link to the Past had an active combat system where there's only one way to swing your sword. You have to keep moving, and every enemy has a different trick you have to figure out in order to beat it, requiring different items, techniques, spells. I mean, just look at all the stuff that's flying around this room trying to kill you. You mentioned the boss fights in Ocarina. Great. Use item stun three times, dead. I mean, the mini bosses required more varied techniques. In Ocarina of Time, almost 100% of the time you're using your sword. The answer is just holding Z, waiting for the enemy to strike, and then you counter striking. Unless, of course, you're playing ping pong, which, can we all agree, is a trend that needs to die, especially when it comes to the final bosses. Complain about the bosses all you want, but Ocarina. I, I can't surf the internet, there's too many links. <laughs> oh, that's a good joke, that's a good joke. I can't surf the internet, there's too many links. That's a good joke, that's a good joke. Defined a Zelda dungeon. Why are the Fire Temple, Water Temple, Spirit Temple, and Shadow Temple so iconic? How about Jabu Jabu's belly and the Great Deku Tree? Because they had a This is the Great Deku Tree. Your opinion is even clear enough. theme. Before Ocarina done. Yo, know, I thought you learned Dragon, so I put a dragon in your dragon. <laughs> Yo know, dog, I heard you like uh, dungeon, so I put a dungeon in your dungeon, so you can dungeon while you are while you're dungeoning. <laughs> oh, a hidden dungeon! Oh, a hidden dungeon! That is clever. Dungeons were pretty generic. The first two games, all you got was a color swap to differentiate them. Link to the Past wasn't much better, with Thieves Town forcing you to escort the boss through the level as the one that stands out, but it was Ocarina that nailed the formula. Great, because that's what games need to be. Formulaic. Your game set the trend that all others would follow to death. Hey, don't hate the popular kid for being popular. It can't be responsible for the sins of later games. And think about it, each dungeon had iconic moments. Take the Forest Temple, for example. Remember the collapsing ceiling or that cool, twisty Inception hallway? Not to mention that the atmosphere is simultaneously haunting and beautiful, and the soundtrack is unlike anything I'd ever heard before. These are things that simply couldn't happen on the dinky old Super Nintendo. You know what else couldn't, or at least didn't, happen on the old Super Nintendo? An epic Zelda story. Oh, excuse me. Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> Ocarina's story is on par with Link to the Past, except replace Dark World with time travel. Oh, don't even try. Ocarina had... <laughs> Let me say that. Is that, is that uh, one, two, three. That. Don't even try. <laughs> Rich, deep characters with unique personalities and problems. Lutetupria had what? Your uncle who died in the first minute of the game? Spoilers. You don't even know, because it didn't matter. Ocarina had Surya and Sheik. And Hot Ruto. And Hot Ruto! And even if it didn't have a character that made you ask yourself some deep ethical questions about your feelings for a digital fish girl, Ocarina was far more artistically done with beautiful moving cutscenes and some of the best songs in gaming history. You know what else it had? Navi. Yeah, but you know what? A rib, a meme, that's just a fun joke that people who love something together say to each other. <laughs> but it's indicative of a... Say, hey, listen, again, I dare you. I dare I dare die. <laughs> Say, hey, listen again. I dare you. I double dare you, Navi. Real problem they had with it. Hand-holding. 
The game nags you, constantly interrupting your free exploring by reminding you of all the real important stuff you should probably be doing instead. If Zelda games are about exploration, OOT punish- <laughs> Can you hear me now? Link! Why you know the sun? Pushes <laughs> you for it, making you feel like you're wasting your time anytime you branch off from the approved track. Must not have been that bad since when Nintendo released a remake for the 3DS, pretty much nothing was changed. Uh, okay, but they remade A Link to the Past for the Game Boy Advance, too. Yeah, but with a bunch of new stuff included to make it feel worth it. Ocarina was already perfect as it is, bruh. And actually, as a matter of fact, they set out to remake Link to the Past for the 3DS, too. But, do you know what happened? Miyamoto and current Zelda director Eiji Anuma decided instead to use Link to the Past as a base for a whole new game called A Link Between Worlds, which was praised for all the ways it changed up and fixed a lot of the problems with the original game. Yeah, A Link Between Worlds, a game that was praised mostly because it bucked a lot of the trends that Ocarina made holy and untouchable. <laughs> Things like items being used as glorified keys and being stuck on a linear path. You could still dungeon out of order in A Link to the Past. Those True. sorts of things weren't a problem. It was your game that created a formula my game's ancestor had to come in and fix. A closing argument! Mega Plus! Oh, it felt good, it felt, it felt good. Oh my gosh, it felt good. It's like, mm, 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 mm. holding all the, uh, holding all the evidence and just say, Pew! there you go, huh? Do you think, do you like me now, huh? And, and then you want the one thing, it's like, I, I don't, why are you so, why are you so agitated? You make me agitated. Ocarina of Time was a step forward for video games and one small step for Garon, one large step for everyone else. General, it seems like here today, this argument boils down to whether games should do what they've always done or we'll evolve with the times. And in this case, Ocarina evolved so much, it dictated the future of what a console adventure game could be. And it extends beyond just pretty backgrounds and music. Ocarina also had a heartbreaking story that gave context to your actions and made you feel like you were really having an effect on the world around you. It's no longer just a cute little garden to play around in. It's a game about a boy who grows up and has feelings for people, who lives with the consequences of his actions and overcomes time itself to defeat evil. Nintendo had always had a reputation for making games that played well and provided hours of fun. But Ocarina of Time was the first game that really showed how much more video games could deliver. But which one was the better Zelda? Yes. You died. You died. Ocarina. Zero HP. Zero HP. You died. Made some great strides towards total immersion. This is the first time I see a zero HP. And some of the cutscenes were phenomenal, but it was linear and fundamentally moved away from the ideals of exploration and adventure Miyamoto created for the series. Haven't you ever heard the saying, life is a journey, not a destination? That's Zelda. Finding cool things and not knowing what they're there for. Whoa. for right away. <laughs> Traveling through a world that exists the way it does with or without you and advancing on your own terms. Engaging in battles and puzzles that require you to think outside the box. That is Zelda. Not a list of features and hindsight about what a big influence it had. If you define Zelda as an adventure series about questing around to unlock mysteries in the world around you, then today, Dark Souls and Bloodborne are more Zelda than Zelda. Granted, Link Between Worlds was a step in the right direction, and there have been some big promises about the new Zelda that's coming down the pipeline, but it took 15 years for Zelda to come back from where Ocarina left it. Okay, but real talk? Skyward Sword's the best Zelda, right? <laughs> <laughs> but real talk. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, we have reached deadlock. Now that the decision is in your hands, which Zelda game is? the high ruler of the franchise, Ocarina of Time, or Link to the Past. Click on one to choose, or write your answer in the comments and send this debate once and for all. <laughs> it's awesome. 
So um, on the previous time, right, um, the audience voted 51% for Pac-Man, 49% for The Last of Us. That's very equal. That's sort of very equal for both sides. I don't think if the audience did the same uh, survey again, I'm pretty sure more of them will side with Pac-Man than The Last of Us because The Last of Us 2 came out in 2020 and it sort of it's, um, make a lot of fans angry about it. That's why. Uh, yes. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope to see you next time. The next time, uh, blah, 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 blah. the video that I just created to just now was a YouTube channel from the YouTube channel, The Game Terrorists. Their videos are amazing. I hope that you will watch it um, as well. And yeah, remember that just a tear. Wait a minute. They didn't do it, right? Because it's deadlock. Anyways, I'm gonna say it now. That's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>